and check out this beautiful timbers. This is uh, Sitka spruce that I picked up last weekend up in Michigan. And it is two by, I have two pieces, two by six inches. And it is just as clear as a bell. These timbers are 16 foot, two and a half inches long. Now the plans call for the mass to be 16 foot, three inches long. Now that last half an inch, I will figure out, uh, quite honestly, it probably won't matter that much. But I've got all the material I need in order to make the mast and all of the spars. So one of the things I was thinking about before I got started that would be nice in shaping those spars and the mast is to have a small draw knife. So I decided to do a little research and I came up with this uh, draw knife here. Now I looked at three different draw knives uh, as I was coming up with my plan. Uh, one is a uh, Petco and I like that a lot. Um, they're older tools. I didn't like the shape of the handle quite as much. The other one I did like an awful lot was the file, which is a Swiss made draw knife. But I ultimately decided on the Veritas draw knife uh, to use as inspiration for not my knife. Now, part of the reason is, is that all of the information that I needed in order to come up with my plan was there on their website. So first thing is that the steel was a, is a 1 8 inch steel that it's three quarters of an inch wide, that the main bevel is 20 degrees, and that the handles were set at 45 degrees. So with that information, I was able to put together a drawing, and then I started collecting my materials. I got a piece of walnut and a half inch brass tube. I also need a piece of steel. Now, I found this a piece of 01 tool steel that is left over from another project. Uh, it originally was 18 inches by 2 by 1 8 inch. And the 1 8 inch is what we need for the draw knife. Um, but you can see that I have cut off some of it. I used 8 inches of it for, I believe it was for the um, rigging knife that I had made. So what I have is a piece of 10 inch long by 2 inch tool steel. Now, in order to get started with this Veritas uh, draw knife, what I did was uh, I took this photocopy and then I enlarged it so that I had it actual size. So you can see here that the blade is four inches long. Now from this photocopy then, I sort of reversed engineered it and came up with a drawing of what I need to do in order to uh, get the drog knife made. So because the steel is only 10 inches long, I thought, well, I'll cut and put a tang on each end of it, and then I'll heat this up and I'll bend it at a 45 degree angle, like it says um, in the description of the Veritas draw knife. Now, the problem here is, is that the draw knives, when you're using them, you're pulling on these handles. And typically, there is some kind of, the, a lot of times the tang will come all the way through the handle and be fastened here. Now that is not the case with the Veritas one. I could not see any uh, photographs of where it came through the handle. So what my concern is, is that by pulling on this, that you could pull the handle off. So what I came up with a couple of things. One, I thought, well, maybe I should weld a threaded rod on there so it could come all the way through. But ultimately what I decided is that I would take this tang and I would epoxy it in and then through the brass ferrule, I would put a brass pin and epoxy that in. So that way it should be plenty strong in pulling on that. So the first thing that I need to do is to shape the piece of metal so that I have these tangs. So first thing I'll do is to take the 
blank of steel here and I'll cut it so that it's exactly three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm getting ready to cut the bevel on here and if you remember it said that it needs to be 20 degrees. So what I did was I set my bevel gauge to 20 degrees and then I found this big block of wood that I put on the end here in order and I adjusted it back and forth until I got the exact uh, right uh, bevel. Now I have uh, with some uh, uh, electrical tape here, uh, my file taped to this flat uh, bronze bar, which uh, because it's flat, it slides really nice and it's heavy, so it really sort of helps weight that down. Now you can see that I put a piece of pine here on my workbench so that when I file this down, I can have a nice clean edge to go to. I uh, had drilled some holes in here in order to attach that. Now, I didn't cut out the tangs yet so that I can do those holes in there with those screws so that I was able to hold it. Uh, so after I get the bevel cut, then I'll cut the tangs. So how this works is basically just filing. One of the things I figured out and made it a little easier was to cross hatch. So you can see I'm kind of filing on a little bit of a diagonal here. I do that until I can not see any um, striations going in the, any direction but the way I'm filing. And then I go the other way. And again, I'm looking to see if the 
as the light shines across there that all of the striations are going the direction that I'm filing. And once I get it that way, then I put a straight cut on there. And repeat. So I take a light and shine it along here. You can see this face of it right here light up or reflect. So you can see along there that I still have, oh, it looks like maybe barely a sixty-fourth of an inch left along there that I need to file off. Well, I think I'm really close. I can really hardly see any reflection at all. So I'm going to switch my files. So what I've been using is what's called a double cut file. And what that means is that there are cuts going one direction and then it's cut again going the opposite direction. Double cut files remove material much quicker than a single cut. Uh, files all come in different grades. Uh, file and we put this one next to it, which is a single cut, <clears throat> not only are the cuts only going in one direction, but they're much closer together than the cuts are here. So this is going to give me a much finer, smoother finish on there. After I finished filing it, I then sanded it down starting with 80 grit and finishing with 400 grit.
Well, while I've got the torch out, I thought I'd heat treat the blade. Now, uh, interesting enough, the temperature that you need to heat treat it at is about 1420 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 770 degrees Celsius. And what happens is the metal becomes non-magnetic. And you can see on the anvil here, or I mean on the vise, I have a small magnet, non-magnetic, so it's a proper temperature, so I quench it into the canola oil. The next thing I need to do is to temper the blade. So I first started by cleaning off some of the fire scale so that I could read the color of the steel. And basically what we're looking for is a dark straw color. And I achieved that by putting it in the home oven for a little more than about a 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour. And now that I've got the blade all tempered, and you can see it at this really nice straw color, which uh, tells me that it was tempered at the proper temperature. So now that I've got this done, I can start uh, to do the final cleanup and polish on it. I had changed my mind on putting those pins through here. I had forgotten that I had some JB Weld, which is extremely strong stuff. Um, it, and it comes in a tube, uh, mixes two parts, equal two parts. Um, it really is almost as strong as steel, uh, as they advertise. So I've decided that I would use this, and if for some reason it did fail, then I'd put a pin in there. But my guess is it never will, because this isn't the kind of knife that's going to be used on really big material, because it's a small knife. <clears throat> uh, 
Now, one trick to uh, see, see, I'm going to put some tape on there to protect against some squeeze out. And uh, one of the tricks to getting, I'm going to make sure this goes on the right way. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. <clears throat> Is to avoid squeeze out, a lot of times the, the tendency would be to want to put the epoxy here on the tang. Uh, which as it goes in there, it's going to get squoze out that way. So I drilled the holes deeper than they need to be here. So that way when I put the epoxy in here, it's going to have a tendency to want to push it that way. And because I drilled the holes a little bit deeper, there's a place for that extra to go. So I'm going to be... See very little squeeze out then. Well, I'm extremely happy with the way it came out. Uh, let me show you how uh, I put the final edge on there. So I take a um, stone here and get it wet. And to put a little micro bevel on there, I'm just going to run this just at a slightly different angle. And that should do it. Yeah, that baby is sharp. I've got a piece of spruce here, so we'll try it out. That works extremely nice. Uh, now I'm all set to get started making the mast and the spars. So as always, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.